Thousands of families are moving to Israel from North America, and there are no shortages of challenges that accompany all the new opportunities in their new home. We asked a number of school principals what they thought the biggest challenges that children face, and most of them agreed on one thing. The biggest challenge is the language barrier. I think it's Hebrew. Language and or culture. They're leaving behind their culture, their language. Everything is new, everything is different. All the instruction that's being done here in any cheder, in any Beis Yaakov, in Eretz Yisrael is being done in Hebrew. In this episode of Tribe Journal, we glean sage advice on overcoming the language barrier from principals who have been successfully serving English-speaking families in Israel for more than a decade. This episode is sponsored by OperationHomeAgain.com, your community's portal for Aliyah. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, if you'd like to set up a time to chat, you can reach us at info at tribejournal.org. Hope to hear from you soon. MIT News reported in 2018 about a new study by Josh Tenenbaum, an MIT professor of brain and cognitive sciences, and Steven Pinker, a professor of psychology at Harvard University, that suggested children remain skilled at learning new languages up to the age of 17 or 18. Joshua Hartshorn conducted this study as a postdoc at MIT and pointed out, quote, if you want to have native-like knowledge of English grammar, you should start by about 10 years old. We don't see very much difference between people who start at birth and people who start at 10, but we start seeing a decline after that, end quote. According to the study, 0 to 10 is ideal, and children over the age of 10 will also learn very quickly, but they won't attain the same level of proficiency that native speakers will have. Of course, that is English, which is known to be a complicated language. Hebrew may be different. Also, if a child has been learning Chumash and other Hebrew texts, then they might be starting with a stronger foundation. But even if the science suggests that it can be done, that doesn't necessarily mean that it should be done. Rabbi Levi Friedman, founder of Dar Noam, a K-8 cheder for boys in Ramat Beit Shemesh, Israel, weighs in on the challenge children face when they arrive in Eretz Israel. A child needs to attain the Hebrew language. For the most part, a, a child acquires a language uh, before the age of six. So if you want to get them that Hebrew language in the strongest, smoothest way, you make Aliyah with your children before the age of six. Great, but now there's children that are 10 years old, 11 years old, and 12 years old. What do we do with them? <laughs> This experiential reality of being an immigrant can be traumatic for children. Rabbi Shmuel Eidenson, founder and executive director of Torah Moshe in Ramat Beit Shemesh, Israel, explains. A child sitting in the class, the Rebbe is talking about Yitzhak Mitzrayim, and he's explaining what happened in Mitzrayim. He sees all the kids like looking, staring at the Rebbe. Something's going on. He looks right, left. What's, how come everyone's staring? This is very interesting. How come I'm not part of this? All of a sudden, the kids laugh, and all of a sudden, they become serious again, and he can't be part of this experience. This is very sad. This is hurtful for a child that goes through this daily, weekly, and monthly for the first few months of his Aliyah. I would say if it's not addressed and it's not planned correctly, then this could be very traumatic for many boys. Right now it's recess, the kids are having a ball over here. Literally a ball. Every child is different with different cognitive abilities. Therefore, parents need to know their children and prepare and guide them accordingly. How long should parents expect this transitional immigration period to last? Uh, first, second, and third grade, it generally is going to take them three, four, or five months for the Oban to begin to kick in, for them to feel like a student again, for them to feel that ac academic viability so they can feel part of the class. A child who comes fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh grade, eighth grade, again, for the most part, it's going to take them a little longer to acquire that Hebrew language. But once they quantify do, it, quantify, well, quantify that. I like to say it's three months plus the grade that they're in. So they're um, in going into seventh grade, three months plus seventh grade, that's 10 months. You got to give them 10 months of Ulpan till the Ulpan catches up with the Rebbe, catches up with the Mora, so they become an academically viable student again. We got a first grade Rebbe here, Rebbe. Feldman. Most of the time speaking Hebrew, right? It ranges between a month uh, two or two and a year, or even more than a year. A boy that catches the language very quickly, and some boys it takes a long time. 
How also, long did it take yeah. you to learn Hebrew? Six months. How long did it take you? A couple of months. I didn't learn yet. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Now that we understand a bit about the challenge the children experience, let's hear how schools have learned to achieve educational excellence in this unique niche. Well, you gotta give them intensive full-on sessions to get them and acquire a very strong Israeli Hebrew, and we do it. There is that time period in between from when they make Aliyah until the Opan really kicks in, that's a challenging time period. The first few years was very challenging for us till we basically figure out how to set up systems in the school to make it easier for every single child. First of all, every single child has programs that takes him out of the class and he joins those programs. For example, Opan, he gets a group of boys together with him that made Aliyah and they basically go out every single day or a few times a week, it depends on the group, and they basically learn together in an exciting way Hebrew. Number two, every single child that makes Aliyah has a private tutor in his language. An English tutor teaching him Gemara, either Chumash or Mishnayis or whatever it is, so he's part of the class. He knows what's going on. He comes prepared to the class. This helps him also with the language when he knows already what we're talking about and he hears Rebbe using those new words that connects him to what we're learning and to the language. We have a coordinator that works with the parents to make sure we're on the same page and we understand the challenges. We know where the boy is holding. The parents know what to expect. The parents know what went on this day, this week, and then we can make adjustments. If needed, it depends on the group of the Olim, we make like emotional groups. Let's have a program, let's play, let's talk over our feelings. Like an emotional support group to get them over this tough time. Sometimes we have to shorten the day. It depends on the child, it depends on the social connection with the boys. Maybe he has to finish one o'clock, maybe three o'clock, sometimes even 12 o'clock. It could be for a week, it could be for a month until he integrates and feels comfortable and is excited to stay. School is a positive place, learning is positive. We want them to feel they did something successful. Our boys must be excited to come to school. You gotta get him his wows. Uh, you take a look at a child and his academic success is just a small piece of the pie. Where is he elsewhere? Where is he socially? Where is he as a friend? Where is he as a sibling? Where is he as a son? Uh, where is he spiritually? Where is he emotionally? Where is he, uh, where is he as self-esteem? Work out of life, there's gonna be a lot of ace. You just gotta believe in these kids and find them their outlets and their mediums and avenues of success elsewhere outside the classroom. The classroom's an important part of their, their, their piece of the puzzle, but it's not the only part, and it's not even the majority. During that 10 months, you gotta apply them with a tremendous amount of positivity. A lot of pizza, a lot of ice cream, a lot of prizes, a lot of games, a lot of positivity. The forest, not the trees. Look for the light at the end of the tunnel. Look for the golden pot at the end of the rainbow. It's there waiting for you. At his bar mitzvah, you're gonna laugh about how difficult it was. Look at how great he did here in Eretz Yisrael. We really have the answers. We have the mitzvahs that can accommodate the Ola who wants to make Aliyah with school-aged children. I'm saying the last few years, I really feel that every single Ole, from the first day all the way till they integrate, they feel happy and excited. However, at an older age, the change in language combined with all the other challenges immigrant children face can be overwhelming. To play the long game on this language and cultural integration, some schools have adopted a less intensive approach to integrating students into the Israeli society. Yerushalayim Torah Academy, a Dati Lumi school in Jerusalem, set up shop as part of an Israeli high school, but created English-speaking instruction in classes for grades 9 through 12. Rabbi David Sampson explains. And all of the people and the students you see around us, these are all Israelis. We are inside of an Israeli school. Uh, the students of our school, they receive a regular Israeli bagrut. They're graduates of Bnei Akiva, Nativ Meir Yeshiva. We have all of the Bagriyot and all of the material for the Bagriyot translated into English so that someone doesn't have to fight reading endless material in history or civil matters in Hebrew. Also, the teachers are all fluent in English and together with that, we teach them Hebrew. One of the Bagriyot is Hebrew, both spoken and written, and you have to know Hebrew in order to get a diploma. By the time the children finish the 12th grade, they're ready to enter regular Israeli programs. We caught up with an 11th grader who just made Aliyah to get his take on things. 
How old are you? I'm 16. Did you know Hebrew before you came here? No, not a word. I, Baruch Hashem, went to two um, English-speaking programs. It really made the transition a lot easier. Let's say there were a thousand 16-year-olds, and their parents are like, son, we're moving to Israel. What advice would you give? Try and hang out with as many Israelis as you can. I kind of made the mistakes of making my entire friend group part of like the Anglo and English-speaking community. And I kind of wish that I made more Israeli friends who spoke Hebrew so I could have picked up the language quicker. If you're hanging out with Hebrew speakers, it will come to you much quicker. That's what I think. A lot of parents come to Israel very, very idealistic. All they want is for their kids to be Israeli immediately. For many, it's not the right time for them to integrate fully. Their bodies are going through changes, the Aliyah. To change also the type of learning they're doing, the environment that they're learning in, sometimes puts kids over the top. And the challenge is to find him an environment where he'll still feel like he's successful, that he'll have self-esteem, and he'll feel like he's challenged in learning. And at the same time, little by little, be able to integrate at his own pace and learn Hebrew. Well, obviously, I'm not the world's expert in Chinuch, uh, so I would say there's Siat and Shema involved in everything, but I really feel that the language of instruction in any school you're starting in Israel should be in Hebrew, because you want them to be able to go out afterwards and speak Hebrew with their Israeli counterparts. That's the country you live in. English is still very, very strong, and it is an entry into many, many fields of, of uh, careers and, and, and workplaces, but they should be able to read, write, speak very proficiently in Hebrew, which is the country of the land. So the strongest recommendation that I can give as a head yot is to have the language of instruction, of course, to be, to be in Hebrew. 60% of kids who make Aliyah between 10 and 15 are able to make it in regular Israeli schools. 40%, which is a lot, are not able to make it. And that if you make Aliyah the later years of high school, 15, 16, 17, 18, then I highly suggest uh, a school that teaches in English because the greatest challenge is the language. Today, there are many great English-speaking options across the spectrum of Yiddishkeit. Some schools have classroom instruction in English and others in Hebrew. Obviously, we're just scratching the surface and it's crucial to have someone you trust on the ground that deeply understands the process of Aliyah integration. And of course, hopefully that light at the end of the tunnel is a bright future with an exponential improvement in Torah learning for these children who paid their dues, but now fluently speak, read, and write in Hebrew as their first or second language. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on the journey as we continue to delve into topics that matter for English-speaking families moving to or living in Eretz Israel. Also, please take a moment to forward this video to a friend, rabbi, or community leader that might appreciate taking a closer look at what the Holy Land has to offer. If you think we can be helpful, send us an email to info at tribejournal.org. Hope to see you soon. It's hard when you start. It's extremely hard. But once you get the hang of things, it's much easier.